tough one. Trout, of course, a birthday home run. And the Angels did not look back. Tonight, the Orioles turn the page and look for Ibaldo Jimenez to turn the page back to what he was before the All-Star break. It's the Orioles and the Angels. Game two of the three-game set is next. The Orioles on mass today continue their West Coast trip, and this is the middle series of it against the Angels, opening up with an 8 4 loss in the ball game last night. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and welcome for the Orioles. The bats have generally been there of late, driving in some runs. The last time around through the rotation, the Orioles actually pitched pretty well. This time through the rotation, not so good. The numbers are way up, and for Abaldo Jimenez, is that ever true? Let's take a look at before and after the All-Star break. This is a divergent difference. With the record 7 and 4 before, 1 and 3 after, the ERA has jumped all the way up to 10.61 after. Opponent batting average has skyrocketed in the game since the break. His first pitch strikes, which are important to him, have gone way down. And that opponent batting average with runner in scoring position that was so good before the break is now way up. Jim Palmer, what is going on? Yeah, well, I think we saw the, uh, you know, the fact that he's getting behind hitters, not throwing first pitch strikes. You know, he's he has to pitch to contact. He's not an overpowering pitcher. You know, we may see 93, but that's going to be far, far between the 91 movement. If he gets ahead, he can use the split, the, the breaking ball. So, again, and the other thing, Gary, is he, two of those games against the Tigers threw three home runs in the first one right after the All-Star break. What do the Tigers do? They lead the league in average. They leave it an on-base percentage. He wants to get you to swing at his pitch in the good hitting teams. Angels, one of those, don't do those kind of things. We've got an interesting matchup here, Jim. Uh, Garrett Richards, who's pitching. You've got two pitchers who have not had a win against the opponent. Yeah, well, you know, and again, I mean, that a lot of those games for Herbado, not when he was with the Orioles. He's 0-5. Richards has pitched well. He's 0-3. Uh, you know, Herbado 2-5 on the road. The Orioles don't play very well on the road. Richards seven and two so the numbers probably favor the angels but after this year I'm not sure you ever know what's really going to happen <laughs> as we've said before because all the numbers favor the angels this is a reverse law come on Mr. Jimenez <laughs> <laughs> all right when we come back middle game it's the Orioles and the angels from Anaheim
Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Gorgeous evening here in uh, Anaheim. Take a look at our BGE home game time temperature. We are at 77 degrees. Blue skies and virtually no breeze at all. BGE Home, Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? Sometimes we forget ball players, managers, skippers, and coaches are also dads. And uh, that is the case for John Russell, the Orioles bench coach. He's got a son playing in the Cal Ripken 2015 10 year old World Series, which is going through the regionals right now. And there they are. They are the Southeast regional champions. They won the district in Tampa, the state in Lakeland. They went to the Southeast Regional in Glen Allen, Virginia, and they won there. And Stone Russell is a member of that team. They are out of Bradenton, Florida. A lot of these kids have played together for about five years. The finals are going to be in Jonesboro, Arkansas. They won today 10 to nothing against the team from Arkansas. They advanced to the pool play in the Cal Ripken Championships. Congratulations to uh, Dad and to Stone. Yeah, you know, we've uh, had the opportunity, of course, to go to Williamsport. I did it, what, I think 13 years. You might still do it. I don't know. You always, you're, you're everywhere. But, uh, you know, I started in the league, and, boy, uh, you see how happy the kids are. And, you know, very competitive. I still maintain. I remember, can't imagine myself playing 10, 11, 12, as we see in Williamsport, playing with that kind of poise. And, and really, the ability and the way they play the game the right way. So, Kudos to all the parents, not only the, the volunteers to yeah. help. I mean, that's that's the crux of Little League, you know, all the, the hot dog stands and the coaches and all that. So, and John's very, very proud. He sure was. He was all over the place today telling uh, everybody the final score of the ball game today. All right, let's take a look at the O's starting lineup brought to you by Southwest. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Machado, Para, and Jones, Davis, Weeters, and Scope, Hardy, Flaherty, and Joseph. Lineups never the same, but Showalter keeps juggling them. Adam Jones against the Angels. There are his career numbers. And for Garrett Richards, you can see a lot of fastballs. Uh, he averaged 96 last year. The same this year. The Vitteller injury, the left knee collapsed on the way to first base. So he missed the last two months. So again, uh, those are the collective numbers. Seven and two at home, which is very important. Fourth best and lowest ERA of any pitcher in the American League. You can see the numbers. Twelve home runs, not a ton of home runs, but probably higher than maybe you expect. But again, a guy that has a power breaking ball and the ball. You know, I mean, to me, this is almost twilight. So you can get it up there, and it all kinds of movement. So the Orioles a tough task against Richards. The 228 opponent batting average is ninth lowest in the uh, American League. And we will uh, see him if he is doing what he normally does, Jim, throw those cutters all over the place. Yeah, you know, and I was talking to Mark Gubis, a former pitcher who does the television for the Angels, and he said it's really, it's kind of like Michael Pineda, who's right up there at the top of the list, maybe a few more percentage. There's his manager, Mike Sosha, another former catcher. But he said it's just a natural movement. And so the ball diving and moving and cutting. So again, uh, when you throw that hard and you can get movement, Mike Butcher, his pitching coach, has done a nice job with it. Because it all came together last year. The poise, the confidence, the ability to, you know, to go out there and say my stuff plays at this level. And then go out there and uh, go 13 and 4. One of the best records in the American League for starting. And Manny Machado will take the pitch for a strike, and we are underway. Manny's got a four game hit streak going. He extended it last night, going three for five in the opener of this series. As the Orioles put the hits on the board, they had four runs on 12 hits, but the Angels got eight on 13. Yeah, they had uh, what, eight chances to drive them in. Uh, they were successful 50% of the time. They had 13 hits. Orioles had 12. Orioles only, I mean, one for four runners in scoring position. Pitch on the way by Garrett Richards will be put up in the air on the right side heading over towards the seats in the Sunfield and that will be out of play. Manny during the streak 6 4 18. A run an RBI over the four game stretch. He of course the second Oriole in 30 years. To have at least 20 homers at age 23 or younger joining Nick Marcakis in that category and Nick on a hot streak with Atlanta. Pitch on the way and a broken back ground ball to first. Big chopper. Pool holes will play it. 
Take a look at the Angels defense, and uh, you know, of course, they've they've added some players. Uh, David Zeus comes from the Rays. He's in left. Trout, Calhoun, very steady player in right. We saw his arm uh, as he threw out Nolan Rymo last night. Gillespie comes over from the White Sox. Ibar, you have Vitello last year with Kansas City, Polhos, Cardinals, and now with the Angels, and then Carlos Perez. We saw him in Baltimore doing the catching. That will bring power to the plate. Power has been productive for the Orioles. You see, he put up the two for five last night. He's got a four game hit streak coming into the ball game. Richards delivery to him right back to the mound. A ground ball pitcher who is starting with ground ball outs. Two down. Yeah, he's almost two to one. What uh, now? 208 on the ground, 102 in the air. I mean, I mean, really, there's no fuss or muss. I mean, he's just going to throw it somewhere around the zone with great velocity and movement. And again, we've already seen. I mean, uh, Manny hit his ball off the end of the bat. Para hit his ball off the end of the bat. So again, when you have that kind of velocity and movement, hard to center the bat for the ball. This has been a tough inning for him. He's given up 10 first inning runs this year. Here's Adam Jones. Adam uh, has had four hits and 11 at bats, including a home run lifetime against the right hander for the Angels. Defense pretty much straight up against Adam, and the pitch will be up high for a ball. Note uh, home plate umpire Jerry Davis, who is the crew chief, based on past history, has the third most favorable strike zone for hitters. You've got to throw strikes if you're the pitcher. That one will be fouled away down the right side. And uh, looking for a 1 2 3 inning. Richards has faced the Orioles once. It was in the, that stay, of course, in May in Baltimore. Two runs, five hits, seven and two thirds. He took the loss in a 1 0 ball game. He has never beaten the Orioles 0 1 this year, 0 3 lifetime. That ball in the air to center field, Trout turning on it. Going back, looking back, and that one's going to be off the wall. Heading into second base, Jones. He will get there and stays in the bag. Two out double. Yeah, Trout threw him out as he drove in far last night because he really didn't run hard. And again, he really doesn't go full bar here, but a little different angle. Well, there's a curveball, and he just smokes it. This back to back nights just misses home runs. And again, perfect carom. And this time the throw a little bit off. But very close. So the Orioles will get a chance here in the first inning. And uh, Chris Davis will get the opportunity. Jones yeah. with a two bagger. How often do you, do you double off the or single off, as it turns out, off the center field wall and get thrown out at second? So I guess there would be a tendency maybe not to <laughs> because you figure, okay, is it going out or whatever? And Trout just knows how to play it and turns around this time, maybe a little different angle. Well, last night was maybe what about 25 feet to the right. So let's see if Chris can get the big two out RBI. Chris has got a five game hit streak coming into the ball game. He's hitting 276 with runners in scoring position. The Orioles had the one for four in these situations last night. Shift on against Davis. Chris will go after the first pitch and foul it off outside of first base. Let's take a look at our Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers regarding Chris. Yeah, this kind of tells you how hot he is. So that's before, and then look what he's able to accomplish in 20, 20 games. And Grand Slam uh, the other night, the three run home runs, a couple of those, two run home runs. Chris, if you're the Orioles, you want to do what the Angels did, what, five of their eight runs last night with two outs? Mm. And a lot of them with two strikes. Big hits. Gary Richards, Jones, big lead at second base. Breaking ball is going to be in there for a strike. Good pitch. For Chris Davis, his slugging is 697 since the All Star break with those nine home runs, and he's had more RBIs than anyone else in the majors. 27 in 20 games since the breaks, and he gets another chance right here. Jones really getting a big lead at second base. Davis will take it. It will miss apparently down low on that one at 87. Yeah, Carlos Perez behind the plate just trying to wait till the last moment to move. So to me, it'll be kind of uh, intriguing to see if he'll try to run the ball at 96 where he can go up and in. 
Delivery to Chris and a swing and a miss. Play has got to be made. The 87 pitch will result in a strikeout who holds over the cover. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Jimenez takes the mound. The Orioles on the West Coast. Here's the Angels lineup to Jesus Calhoun and Trout, Pujols, Murphy, and Ibar, Gillespie, Giovatella, and Perez. This season, you see the 11 home runs with two strikes, third most in the majors for Pujols. So, Abaldo will uh, get to back on track uh, as we mentioned. You can see a lot of fastballs, two seam varieties. Told me the other day, even when he threw 100, he never ever has thrown a four seam fastball. The two seamers, curveballs, sliders, and then the splitter. We talked about it in the open 0 and 5, a lifetime against the Angels. Those are with different teams. So again, uh, you know, the ERA has gone up over the last four starts 22 runs. It's gone from 281 to 408. Needs to get the low strike, needs to get ahead. And maybe tonight they'll hit some balls at people. So De Jesus will lead it off. One for five in the ballgame last night. David De Jesus will take the pitch. De Jesus will have the uh, D swung around towards left in the outfield as Adam Jones just took about six steps towards left field after that first pitch for a strike mm -hmm. and that hitting that will be the sixth hit batter by Jimenez and he starts the game up with it. Well they try to come in and uh, you know he's going to he, he loves to throw the two seam fastball that starts at the front hip of a left handed hitter and runs back but. You know, it's the first inning. It's a different mound. You warmed up out, you know, down the right field line or down in left field, depending on the ballpark, and then you come in and it counts and all that. So you try to make the perfect pitch and you hit him. And we talked about first inning runs. How about giving up 11 in his last four starts? That is the sixth time De Jesus has been hit. Now Calhoun comes up. Calhoun with the one for four last night. Good power. Move the ball around. Infield will be at double play depth. And the pitch will be taken away for a ball. And, and what it does, it said he, he he can hit home runs in the number two spots. He can walk a little bit. You know, pretty disciplined hitter. He's a pull hitter, so he can shoot the ball into right field. If you're Chris Davis, you're the only guy on the field that can't really see the ball off the bat because of the sun. Then as the look over to first base Calhoun on a check the Orioles have got to get some help from their starters. Over the last eight games the Orioles starters ERA is over seven seven point oh seven. They've allowed five or more runs four times and they have not pitched deep. They've pitched fewer than six innings six times in those eight games. Club has still gone five hundred four and four in those eight ball games but that's asking for a lot of offense. Pitch on the way and a swing and a miss on one up high. Steve Molesky putting those numbers together. MassinSports.com and they are a telling figure on the Orioles starters. And meanwhile, uh, since Troy Tulowitzki has been traded to the Jays, they haven't lost. Yep. 
9 and 0. So Calhoun now gets the shift, full shift put on. Interesting. They didn't go into it until it was a one ball, two strike count. Runner at first base to Jesus not going, and the pitch will miss outside. 93 on the fastball, two and two. So let's see. We saw a Trout with two strikes go to the opposite field. Ibar, Paul Holtz, and then Murphy twice. They're saying Calhoun with the two strikes pulls. Let's see if that happens. Manny Machado is the only one on that third base side of the diamond. The outfield is actually shaded the left. 2 2 delivery on the way to him. That'll be fouled back into the screen. Angels playing some good baseball. They've won three of their last four games. They come in to tonight's game just a game out of first place in the division. Again, Houston lost today. So the Angels, who have won two in a row, are back to within one. The Yankees lost today, so the Orioles start the game uh, five and a half out in third place with Toronto in between the Orioles and the Yankees. Runner goes, popped up. Machado with a long run over will run out of room. And in the wild card race, the Orioles, as a result of today's games, are three games off the wild card pace. But Showalter's Ball Club needs wins. Not a time of the year when you can fall very far behind and hope to make up ground. Yeah, that's a, the only thing that you can control is the way you play. I don't know what the Yankees are going to do. Obviously, when the Yankees play the Jays, something's going to happen, and it has. Yankees have lost the last two. Two ball, two strike count on Calhoun. Shift on against him. Calhoun goes the other way. Manny Machado will flip for one. The relay will not be in time. So he did go the other way, but right where Machado was moved over to. So they get the force. And we'll bring up Mr. Trout in our Jeep inside the numbers has to do with this MVP. Well, there you go. This is against the East with the Angels hitting them well. And of course, the Astros. Which they do lead the American League in home runs, not runs, but home runs. Well, let's see what he does here. Home run on his birthday yesterday, turned 24. He's hit a home run on three of his birthdays now, so celebrate. And the pitch is taken for a strike. I and saw him at the cage. I said, I sure hope we're not celebrating your birthday again tonight. <laughs> he he seems laugh. Based on his home run totals, yeah. he has a lot of birthdays. Yeah, he does. He you know, leads like, everybody with 33 home runs. I say everybody. He's ahead of Cruz, uh, or the former Oriole. Nelson's got 32. He's only one behind Trout. Yeah, he's hit home, home, he home runs. Oh, did they play? Yeah, they played today. They got beat to what 11 to three. But he coming into today had hit home runs in five straight games. Trout is seventh in average, first in homers, seventh in RBIs. He has the second best average with runners in scoring position. And then as delivers to him, and the pitch will miss down low. He's had a three for nine lifetime off the Orioles starter. Yeah, you watch him take batting practice, and you would think he's a double hitter because he hardly ever pulls the ball. I mean, it's right center, left center, inside out. Even the swing, 97 mile per hour fastball off of Gosman last night. That's in there. Yeah, it was a solid swing. And Don Baylor, his hitting instructor, said he still likes to take the first pitch. Whatever makes you comfortable yeah. if your name's Mike Trout. One ball, two strike count. Infield will shade him to pull. Runner at first base, Calhoun on the fielder's choice. We'll get a throw over. Trout has actually hit better on the road uh, than he has here at home. He's a 328 hitter on the road, 16 home runs, 284 here at home, 17 home runs. Any club would take him either place. One two delivery on the way and up and in and a real good pitch and Trout's gun. Yeah the uh, second strike was down and away so again all of a sudden. You know, last night they did a number with two strikes but this is the perfect pitch up and in. Because when you get the two strikes you're looking both sides of the plate. I mean tremendous bat speed but just couldn't quite get to it. So Albert Pujols will stand in. Pujols. Opened up the series with the one for four last night. 
Six for 22 lifetime off Jimenez with a home run. Jimenez with the 0 and 5 record against the Angels lifetime, including an 0 and 1 mark this year, but in a very tough ball game like Garrett Richards, who lost against the Orioles for Jimenez. He pitched seven innings, two runs, eight hits against the Angels in a two to one loss. He had a good outing against them. Pitch on the way and pulls off the end of the bat. Foul. Rebounds all the way out to the mound. Albert against the Orioles this year, 4 for 17. One of those four hits a home run. Orioles have actually, in Pujols' career, done a pretty good job. They've held him down to a 261 batting average, five home runs. You can do that against Pujols. He mm -hmm. succeeded. Well, 30 home runs this year back in 2012. He really hasn't uh, until pretty much last year, maybe a couple of months in. He's had knee, plantar fascia, an abundance of injuries since he signed with the Angels. Pool Holtz picking the pace up of late with a 300 average so far in August. Six for 20. Pretty good location. Will miss either low or low end away. Three and one. And then as we'll be careful here with that the Orioles do that in count shift they move the infield completely over playing him to pull when he's ahead. Yeah with 30 home runs they'll give him a single to right here with two outs. At first base Calhoun. And that is delivers to him pulls takes it there for a strike. Yeah that is where a balder would like to live right around the kneecaps. And then get a high percentage of those pitch called by Jerry Davis. I so asked three two runner goes. I asked Caleb Joseph who's catching tonight. He said, uh, an older umpire Jerry Davis. <laughs> I said low ball umpire. Runner going down to third base. Nice play Machado. He'll make the throw over. Pools is retarded. Retired. No. Nope. No runs, no hits, no errors except for that one. Five hundred for being selected. Five hundred more for every Orioles home run hit tonight. Play baseball box scratch offs went up to fifty thousand. Or enter non-winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Visit mdlottery.com/slash/baseball. Frank, great to have you with us. That's right, exactly. That's what I echo my sentiments. On the road trip, and well dressed, we might add. Big game hunter. Can be seen in the forest. The old game. And uh, in case somebody wants to take a. Gnome along on the road, that's how you do it. That's right. He'll probably head to Seattle uh, right after tomorrow, get there by game time, go through the Redwoods, feel very comfortable in the forest. Under the, the gnome. Yeah. Who knows? It might attract a couple gnomes. A strike on the outside corner of Matt Wieters. Matt is DHing in the ball game. He's had a three for five with a home run off Richards. That's one reason he's DHing. Also, this 
is the ballpark where he tears it up. And he had that side open, so he was trying to bunt for a base hit. Now, last night we talked that's fifth home run lifetime in this ballpark. I mean, get the Orioles the early lead. The Orioles would have a four to three lead going into the sixth. That will fight that one off. Richards' numbers here at home really are uh, amazing. 174 batting average at home. It's over 100 points higher on the road, and it's not an aberration in his career. He's 18 and 8 here in Anaheim with a 3.4 ERA. Pitch on the way to Matt. Wow, that was a good bouncer. Would have been a good cricket delivery, but unfortunately, this isn't cricket. Well, you want to get on top of your breaking ball, and you know this is easy to do. I mean, he just spikes it. But you're right. The bowler. To call the cricket pitcher, I think. The bowler. Yeah, and keep that in mind because Richards has 11 wild pitches thrown. So if the Orioles get people on base, there is a chance to advance on pitches like that. He throws a few. Then he comes right back with a 90 mile an hour and gets him. Yeah, a hard breaking ball gives you an idea of what kind of arm speed he has. This ball goes straight down, very much like the uh, the strikeout of Chris Davis. And the uh, the first. Adam Jones out at second base. Well, he's got great stuff. I, you know, they don't get him a whole lot of runs, but you kind of wonder how he lost eight games. You know, they get him a little over four runs a game. That should be enough to win. His ERA has jumped a little over uh, a run, almost a run a game rather this year from last year. Jonathan Scope. Jonathan's got a six-game hit streak coming into the ball game. He's really. Been tagging the baseball. We talked about him barreling up pitches seemingly every game. He's 11 for his last 21 home run, four runs, two RBIs during the streak. And Riches is going to move him off the plate a little bit for that delivery, 2 and 0. Yeah, right center, the home run last night. I mean, he's hit bullets all over the ballpark. Talks about having quality at bats. And a great breaking ball again. Boy, we've seen a couple of those with some nasty movement. Yeah, and, and if you're not only Jonathan Scope, but any of the other Oriole hitters, if he'll do that 2 and 0, he'll do it in any count. 2 1 count, one down. Right hander's pitch, Jonathan off the fists. There you see the July August numbers. How's that for a start for a new month? 11 for 21. Two and two guarding the line at third Gillespie and the pitch will just miss. Those are the ones we were talking about earlier with Jerry Davis behind the plate. You're the pitcher you don't expect to get those calls. Well, or shouldn't. Think, yeah well he was walking off the mound because I think he thought he struck him out. Jonathan will get another pitch to hit here, or at least to swing up. Perez sets up away. Pitch came into the middle, and he didn't miss it. Scope gets the base hit. So Jonathan's got a seven-game hit streak. The Orioles have their second hit of the ball game. Our express stat by Express Care, a LifeBridge Health Partner. For locations, visit whyweightintheer.com. So those are the numbers, and you kind of explain a cut fastball. It's if you throw it like your regular fastball, you hold the ball off center. Well, Pineda does it. Richards does it. Chavez has to do it. Bob Gardner, World Series hero, and then Corey Kluber, Cy Young Award winner. So it can be a very effective pitch. Gives you a lot of movement. And if you don't mess up your windup, it can be very helpful. That one at the knees on the inside corner to J.J. Hardy. J.J. had an 0 for 3 in the opener last night at 2:40. Now he's 1 for 11. Lifetime off Garrett Richards. Runner at first base scope, very short lead over there. Pitch on the way will be down low. Base dealers with Richards on the mound have uh, picked up three out of seven. And behind the play press has thrown out 38% of base stealers. Yeah, 10 out of 26. So you're always figuring, okay, of course the Orioles don't have a lot of base stealers other than Manny Machado. 
Pool holes on the bag with him at first. Ball lit in the air. Right center field. Not going to travel very far. Calhoun diving. He's not going to be able to get a chase to the wall by Trout. Here comes Scope. Bobby Dickerson waving him home. Relay throw to the plate and not in time. A double for Hardy at an RBI and the Orioles take a one nothing lead. Yeah I think Jonathan Scope had a little trouble reading that because of the sun. And then uh, again because uh, again Calhoun's going to come over you can see the uh, kind of band of light so he comes across right there he doesn't know he's going to catch it now he says it go by him. And I think the again uh, you know, Gia Vitello is going to get it. He's, and then uh, beats it, but I don't know if he ever touched the base because it looked like he slid over it, and then Perez tagged him, and then he stepped on it. Mike Sosha is asking for a hold up here while his video people take a look at it. So look at the leg, elevated left leg, and it's hard to tell whether that right leg bent underneath actually hits the front edge of the plate. Sosha wants a challenge, so yeah. he's going to challenge. Jerry Davis, I mean, sitting, I mean, standing right there. Strange play. And again, here's another one of those calls that if it was not for replay, you would never question this in days gone by. If you look at the uh, right leg that's bent, and again, I, it, it's really hard to tell that he didn't touch it, and that's what they'd have to change it about. Now, was it clear cut? The umpires want to make sure what is the challenge. It's not about catcher interfering with the runner and the base pass rule. So take a look. Now the left leg is obviously over home plate. You can see it almost right in the middle of our screen. Now does the right leg that's bent, does it hit the corner? Well the question I guess is whether that Leg that was up came down in time on the plate. It looked like well, the back leg never caught it. Well, it might have. I, you know, the, the you know, if, if a ball hits your uniform, it's you're hit by a pitch. It looked like the edge of his uniform, the blouse effect of the leg, might have hit that front edge of the plate. But again, I don't think there's anything to tell you that he didn't. I mean, that's usually what they base it on. But so, so show the manager challenge. You get one of those. We have to get some replay music. I think Pat Sajak. That's already taken. Pat, Pat was Sajak. here. Yeah, he was here last night. Yeah. All right, let's take a look here while they're waiting on the review. Here's the way the reviews have gone. You see the total number reviewed, 47 and a half have been overturned. The manager's challenges, 50% have overturned. And umpires, when they do it themselves, 20, almost 28%. So it's been that same number all year. With the 47 to 50 percent of the reviews resulting in a play being overturned, so the replay rule has had a substantial impact on calls. And New York taking a while, and Richards takes a few throws here while New York decides whether to keep the call of safe or reverse it. Jonathan Scope. So take a look one more time, and I guess. The a couple of questions here. Number one, did he ever touch the plate? If if the Angels thought he did, they wouldn't have tried to get this overturned. So left leg up, right leg. Does it hit it? And of course Perez tags him right there, and then of course left leg hits the plate. He's already tagged him. So I guess if they really didn't, that right leg did not actually hit the plate. He's going to be out. There's your feet first slide. Yep. You know it, it, it's funny how many players we saw Adam Jones almost hurt his ankle last night going into second base sliding. I you know you, we, you mentioned Vern Hosha. I still remember in my first spring training everybody because it didn't have the DH everybody had to go to the sliding pits. We had a guy Barney Schultz who was you know one of the coaches he would actually do it on the cement. Oh he'd just be running down the, uh, the you know we had uh, like barracks in Thomasville Georgia that hurts. Now let's see what the call is. He's out. Call is reversed. So that was timely. Obviously, Hardy gets a double. No RBI. Play goes eight, four, two at the plate. 
And the challenge correctly taken by the Angels and Mike Sosha results in a non run. Wow. Yeah, the Orioles had uh, two, what? Trout threw out uh, Adam Jones last night, and then Reimold was thrown out by the right fielder Calhoun. So now Flaherty up, two down and a runner on his second base. That ball was not fouled off and no throw. That's what we were talking about with runners on against Richards. A lot of bouncing balls come to the plate, so you got to be alive and uh, take advantage of wild pitches to move up on. And with now the Orioles get a runner at third and a chance to score from there. 12 wild pitches Richards has put out this year. They're going to call it pass ball. Well, sorry. <laughs> Thought it hit the dirt. It did. Under the rule book, if it hits the dirt, it's automatically a wild well, pitch. But another one. <laughs> and that'll be bounced away. Well, they give Ryan Flaherty, who hit 128 in the month of July at the punt. If he pulls, I mean, if he just bunts down the first baseline, he's going to get a base hit. Not that he works on this a lot. You're going to get your run, the two outs. He's all for 26, so yeah. he's really fighting it right now, looking for that one hit to open the door again for him. Did not play in the ball game last night. One ball, one strike count. Pitch on the way, and that is on the outside corner for a strike. Yeah, Ryan had uh, 16 RBIs in the month of June. Now the Orioles one run take it off the board. Now a chance to get a run. J.J. Hardy on at third base. Flaherty 263 in these situations on the year. Pretty good number. Pitch is going to be a fastball. It'll be up and away. And the count two balls and two strikes. Yeah, it was almost like Garrett Richards really didn't want to throw that pitch. So he just kind of. Didn't commit himself to it. Probably wants to go to the breaking ball. Flaherty, a better fastball hitter than off speed hitter. Flaherty's four for seven off Garrett Richards. That's one of the reasons he gets is getting the start here tonight, playing at first base for just the seventh time this year as a starter. As Buck Showalter continues to massage these lineups day in and day out to try and get the what he hopes will be the best chances to have some offense against the opposing. Pitcher and team. 3 2. Richards out of that high set. And he got it. So the strikeout will be his second. The Orioles, no runs on a couple of hits. One play at the plate challenged, and the run taken away. Best run differential in the major leagues at a plus 79, trying to hang on to a division lead. Toronto is first, 127. Blue Jays have won 10 of their last 11. Shut out the Yankees, 6 0 today. They are unbeaten with Tulowitzki in the starting lineup. And the Rangers, they've won 8 out of 10. They're on the tear. 313 average, 61 runs over that span for the Rangers, who were all but out of it 
And still maybe they got a massive comeback they need to launch but they're doing it. But they're only four back in the loss column. Yep. I mean that's for first place in the American League West. And the pitch on the way will be a breaking ball taken by David Murphy. Murphy the DH two for four last night continues his run against the Orioles. He is nine for 17 this year off the Orioles. And he will foul that one away. Orioles now have won one lost three against this Angels ball club this season. The Angels have outscored the Orioles in the four games that have been played out hitting them. That'll be put up in the air over by the third base side. Manny Machado's right there. He's good. One down. When the Orioles return home, it'll be on Friday. Don't miss the season's next fireworks night. Orioles take on the A's. Stick around after the game. Great fireworks display presented by Baltimore Area Credit Unions. Tickets Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. Ibar switch hitter stands in big night in the ball game last night. Ibar ended up with a three for four at three singles, a run scored. Manny Machado will play in at third base against Eric Ibar. He'll take it for a strike. 313 right handed, 263 left, two home runs hit from this side of the plate. And six for 14 with a home run against Nubaldo. Bunted hard. Yeah. Caught in the air. <laughs> Flaherty that time on a little pop up. Yeah, that's what I had in mind for uh, Flash, as they call him, Ryan Flaherty. The side bar goes, you know what? You can play back a little bit. It's about execution. Got to get it down. You got a chance. It'll bring Gillespie up to the plate. Starting third baseman. Ofer in the game last night. That Ofer continued uh, an Ofer 11 that he has coming into the ball game tonight. Two down, nobody on. No score in the ball game. I'm trying to think that call on the challenge that took a run away. Has there been another time this year where the Orioles have had a run taken away at the plate? I don't think so. On a challenge. I think that may be the first time that's happened this year. 1 0 -oh count. And Gillespie fouls it off the other way. Yeah, it's a really kind of a double edged sword. You know, a lot of times your guy's safe at second, but maybe comes off a little bit or whatever. But it wasn't like the throw beat Jonathan. No, Stoke. he just did not hit the plate when he had plenty of time to score. And then as looking for the one two three inning and Gillespie goes upstairs and can't find that one probably out of the strike zone. It was like a zoom ball breaking ball that just stayed up. He thought it stayed down. Still the uh, the light uh, very advantageous to pitchers at this time. Of the night. Yeah. Lights haven't taken effect. Twilight time. Yeah. Pitch on the way. Gillespie will put it up in the air. Manny Machado a long run. Baldo started over as well. No play on it. They have changed that uh, when Hardy was on and went from second to third. It's a wild pitch. Not a pass ball. I didn't realize I think sometimes if you're a baseball fan just for the heck of it sometimes take a rule book and just thumb your way around once in a while you find things in it no matter how long you've been watching the game you just don't realize and one of those things I was looking at this spring was. It's an automatic wild pitch if the ball hits the dirt on the way to the catcher. It doesn't matter whether yeah. the catcher should have blocked it or could have blocked it or it's just automatic. Yeah, it's, it's I mean it just makes your job as a scorer a lot easier. It doesn't yeah. mean the ball shouldn't have been blocked. I think that's yeah. when you get into the judge and juries, your manager going, especially if it's Mike Socio, yeah. former catcher. Two ball, two strike count. Menez delivers over the top will miss outside with it so Gillespie works at full three balls and two strikes. Full count delivered. Whoa. Right back into the 
near the on deck circle. Yeah, Connor Gillespie, I think they would like to have him drive the ball. We talked about it last night. Don Baylor saying, you know, he likes the swing, but liked him to be a little bit more aggressive, maybe look for pitches. And now, of course, when you get the three and two, kind of becomes the guy that we saw in Chicago. He's more of a line drive hitter. Delivery by Jimenez, and he gets him to go after it. So a couple of strikeouts in the ball game and a one two three inning for Ubaldo. Who would you like to be when you're on the West Coast. How about the beach. First, they defeated the Yankees six nothing today with Price of uh, no runs, three hits, and that was seven Ks. The Rays defeated the Mets five to four. Sizemore, I'll tell you, he's playing some good baseball for Tampa Bay. Two for four, home run, couple of RBIs, and real good defense. And Toronto has acquired an infielder, Cliff Pennington, from Arizona. Stock up on their availability of infield players. He can play anywhere in the infields, second, short, and third in that order primarily. He was hitting 237. 72 games this year. Toronto's going all out to yep. stack it. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. But to get Price, who won today, arguably one of the best lefties in baseball, and even if you only end up renting him for two months plus the postseason, if you get there. And then, of course, the Mets have won, what, seven in a row? Of course, they lose, and then the Nats win. So back to one in the loss column over in the National League East. Caleb Joseph leading it off. Garrett Richards' pitch will be outside. Caleb has not had a hit off Richards in six at bats against the 27 year old right hander who finished 13 and 4 last year. Well, we'll see if the new look, Caleb Joseph, can solve it. He's got a lot of respect for him. 1 1 will just miss outside. Caleb patient, two ball, one strike count. Hale of the season as far as home road he's hit 286 at home 223 on the road this year. Puts that one up in the air to right not deep charge charge Calhoun who was deep off the glove of Jim Atella. Joseph heads up goes into second base he's got a double. And that's the outfield playing deep you're not going to get those. Yeah and then when you don't get a good jump. Uh, Calhoun does not get a good jump at all. You know, before it looked like he maybe had trouble with a hardy ball, but again, I mean, he, he takes a step back, and you could just see that they call it a drop step. And then Gia Patella, you know, yesterday he dropped the ball off of Rymold's bat, and this, that was pretty routine. This is a pretty tough play if you have a converging right fielder. Mm -hmm. So now the Orioles another chance. Leadoff man on at second base, first time they've had the leadoff man on. Manny Machado grounded out his first time up. Lesby even with the bag at third. Machado will take the pitch inside for a ball. Let's see what the Orioles can do with this one. 
Manny coming in seventh and runs ninth and hits. Among the American League offensive leaders. Joseph good lead off second breaking ball is going to miss outside. Two and oh. Well, Garrett Richards. Falling behind here on the leadoff batter. Hitters just 217 off him with runners in scoring position this year. It's a very solid number. Machado may get one. That's going to be a base hit into left field. The ace who's up with it will hold the runner at third base. So with the shortstop moved over, hole was found, and the Orioles cover the corners with nobody out. And you're, if you're sitting at home, you're going, why didn't he score? Well, I'll tell you why. You don't want to get thrown out at third. If you're Caleb Joseph, you're hope the ball is to your right. In other words, to the shortstop side, even though uh, Ibar was up the middle, he catches it. You're out at third, so he just hesitates, waits till it gets by Ibar, and now you got first and third, nobody out. And here's the newer Oriole, not the newest, Para. Grounded out his first time up. You're still looking for his first RBI. He's had an uh, what, six chances, 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position for him. That one is knocked down. They're going to go home. Pull holes. They got the runner trap. Joseph was off on contact. They're running back to the bag. Not a good rundown. Tag is put on Richards, but it took long enough so the runners could move up. Yeah, that ball's hit so hard from our vantage point. I almost thought it was in the air. I mean, it was just smoked. Again, and then the good base running. I mean, Bolos makes a terrific play. I mean, watch here. He comes off the bag. You talked about it last night. He catches it. Low throw. Perez makes a nice catch. And then right here, Caleb with pretty good speed for a catcher. He gets in the rundown long enough for the runners to advance. I so tell you. Second and third. Yeah, Richard's uh, a lot of good fortune tonight. Outstanding play by Pujols. And Parra did exactly what you want to do. Right? You want to try to hit a ball into right field. And they got the hole. You talked about it last night. He usually plays a little bit behind it so he can take away the hole. Didn't get off the bag that much right where the ball was hit. So Adam Jones, base hit. Orioles could get a couple of runs on the board. Scoreless ball game. Adam had a double his first time up to deep center field. Richards delivery on the way to Adam will be fouled off the other way. Here's that double as these two all stars looking at one another again. Trout threw him out last night. Adam goes into second base. This time he's in there and he turns the trope and goes, uh uh, not again. One strikeout on Jones, one down. Manny Machado at third base, Paras on at second. Richards delivery slow roller runners go plays to third tag is on they get the out a run will score so Jones will get an RBI on the fielder's choice bringing home Manny Machado and the Orioles have a one nothing lead yeah, heads up play by Eric Ibar play in front of him we talked about how Caleb didn't want to do that ball to his right because uh, you're sending the runner Runners at second and third. He's going on contact. He goes. And then Ibar play in front of him. Runner in scoring this position. He throws him out. And man, he makes it one to nothing. So now runner at first base with two down. Here's Eric Davis. Eric, uh, Eric, Chris Davis, <laughs> by far the RBI leader for the Orioles with 79. That RBI by Adam Jones, his 53rd of the year. And uh, Chris up there coming into the day, ranked second and runs batted in behind Josh Donaldson, seventh in home runs for Davis. Pitch on the way will be up and out. 96 for Merchants on that one. One for five lifetime for Chris against. The angel starter. Pool Holtz will hold it first on Jones. 
Richards gets it in for a foul ball. Orioles getting the pitch count up on Richards early in the ball game. He has one complete game this year. He shut out the Red Sox in a three nothing win no runs two hits over nine innings. That's his one complete game of the season through 113 pitches in that one. One two delivery. Chris will take a breaking ball. It's down low. Yeah, that was a nice take because uh, again when you try to throw your curveball with two strikes you, you try to throw it exactly where Garrett Richards did which is break it down a little bit below the strike zone so it goes from strike to ball and the ball to strike where it's a little more hittable full shift employed here in the infield with two down Two two delivery on the way and a check swing did he go no throw down to second base nobody covering tag is not in time nobody knew what to do there well yeah I can tell you what to do you got to slide Perez thought you may have had him on a strikeout so did the pitcher Richards at second base Giovatella never got over there or the shortstop never got over there to cover cover because they had the shift on and everybody just kind of froze including. Adam Jones, who initially thought that was a swing. Now, Sosha is asking for a hold up here on the play at Sega Base. Hey, if you slide, I mean, he's not doing this. He just. And not going to challenge. So Adam Jones gets into scoring position, no small matter. It's another wild pitch, I think. Two in the ball game, 13 on the year by Richards. And Davis gets a chance here for a second Oriole run. And it'll be outside Watson. Kind of a strange inning underway here. Time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use O's couch cam. You just may see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T-Mobile. First walk of the game by Richards. Yeah, Mike Butcher is going to have come out and have a little conversation. Well, you saw it, it, it's about a uh, two-thirds fastballs, cutters, whatever you want to call them, a lot of movements, and then the rest, the hard breaking ball. You know, all the stuff that's happened, Orioles with five hits and a walk and hit only one run. I'm sure, that was part of the message. Just yeah. get out of this inning and and there are two down. So Matt Waiters with runners at first and second. Matt was a strikeout victim. His first time up. Only 192 with runners in scoring position. Five for 26 for Matt. Waiters goes after the first pitch. Ibar over and he's up. So Richards indeed works his way through it. As the Orioles will pick up a run, they do it on a couple of hits, leave a base runner on. One nothing O's.
your low fare now at southwest.com and by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer with you here in Anaheim. The Orioles will be heading up to Seattle. Three games there after the day game tomorrow to conclude this series. Orioles have the one nothing lead. Three o'clock for O's extra. Three thirty for the ball game on Mass and Two HD tomorrow. It'll be Miguel Gonzalez and Jared Weaver, the scheduled starters. Chris Tillman has been pushed back a couple of times now, and uh, he's going to pitch the second game in Seattle. It'll be Chen Tillman and Gosman to pitch in Seattle. Yeah, that off day really, uh, because Chris didn't uh, go on the disabled list with that roll of ankle. Spring, whatever you want to call it. Because the off day, I mean, Miguel will pitch tomorrow, regular turn. Giavatella, he has a five game hit streak. He continued it last night with a two for five, gets jammed. Baldo Jimenez, effective so far. No walks, two strikeouts. Angels do not have a hit, a hit batter. The only base runner. On against Ibaldo so far. Perez and then to Jesus at the top of the order do up. And then his pitch will miss outside. Taken. Told you how important first pitch strikes are, especially to Jimenez. Even that pitch right there, I think Ibaldo would have liked to, to see Jerry Davis's right arm go up. Two ball, two strike count. And that's taken down low off the plate. Yeah, those are two pitches that normally hitters swing at against Mr. Jimenez. And we saw last night the approach was pretty good with two strikes using the opposite. Three two delivery to short. DJ Hardy right at him. First out. Next Saturday, August 15, the first 20,000 fans, 15 and over, get the J.J. Hardy Orange replica jersey. The A's will be in town, 705 game. You can add to your Birdland wardrobe. This is the detailed replica of the popular alternate jersey that the Orioles have. Tickets at Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. That'll bring Perez to the plate. Carlos Perez getting the start catching in the ball game. Ionetta. Had that job last night. Perez, 42nd game behind the plate, hit it down to third and the foul. Out of Venezuela, 25th Venezuelan to play in an Angel uniform. The first one, though, has been a catcher. JJ Hardy trying to sneak a peek through the sun, foul back into the screen. Depends entirely on where he plays in short. If he takes a step backwards or forwards, he's out of the sun, as you can see. And that's what he's trying to do. 0 2 pitch by Jimenez will be up and away. Jimenez working, pretty good pace. 1 2 pitch. Perez will take it inside. For Perez this season, he's only had 140 at bats. The regulars are up closing in on or just a little over 400 at bats. Two home runs, 13 RBIs. And Perez takes it, mm -hmm. and that will miss. Yeah, that's another one that he would love to have. And there have been umpires with the strike zone lower, being lower. Or being lowered by certain umpires that sometimes that pitch will get called. Perez takes it, so after falling behind, he draws a one out walk. First walk surrendered by Jimenez. And only the second base runner the Angels have had in the ballgame. De Jesus was hit by a pitch his first time up. Jesus with a one for six off Jimenez. De Jesus, a lot of at bats against the Orioles. This year has gone eight for 33. And will take the pitch away for a ball. 
Well, the game that left-handed hitters play against right-handed pitchers with a man on is can you make a pitch on the outside third quarter of the plate that I can't hit into right field on the ground. And if you can't command that outside corner, we already seen Parra do it. Got the corner yeah. that time. You know, it doesn't really matter how you do it. But again, if you throw that uh, same splitter in, easier pitch to pull. And maybe David Davis is trying to do that. Very short lead taken to first base. Perez, not a base stealer, does have Flaherty holding the bag on him though. One ball, one strike out. And then his delivery is a breaking ball that's going to bounce off the plate, and it goes to two and one. Now you talk about pitch counts. Let's see, 29 balls that are for strikes, 21 for balls. So a lot of pitches, and again, tight strike zone, and they're making them work. Jimenez on the road, 0 and 3, ERA over 7 in his last four road starts. That one a chance for two. Jonathan Scope, the Hardy, and the relay, and they got it. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. So he faces only three in the inning. The Orioles up one nothing. Walker actually uh, very briefly uh, with the Orioles were in Minnesota came up this year. In a terrific year last year double A 20 home runs actually uh, 18 at bats for the Orioles and a home run in the month of September. So this year a triple A number of home runs not as much but then again you know, another higher classification. And you never ever know with the Orioles having seven free agents. Numbers getting better as the season progresses for Christian Walker. There'll be some openings next season. Richards has given up the one run on five hits. The Orioles have left four. The Angels have zeros across, have left only one on base. Richards begins the fourth inning with a pitch that'll miss up high. Jonathan Scope. Delivered a base hit in the second inning and the big play of the ball game where he was thrown out at the plate on a challenge by Mike Sosha on a review where he had been called safe. The review said New York showed he did not touch the plate in an 8 4 2 put out, took away what would have been the Orioles' first run. 2 0 delivery on the way. Jonathan will pop that one up. Silo shot coming back. Perez. And he's done. Yeah, there's the movement right there because he had a home run swing on that 2 0 pitch. Well, next Sunday, August 16, the Orioles take on the A's. The first 7,500 fans, 14 and under, get that Chris Tillman growth poster. It's presented by Tops. See how your young child measures up to the 6 5 O's hurler. You'll have fun with a life size poster. Kids will love it. Orioles.com or 8888 for a bird for tickets. It's a lot of paper. 6 5. 
That's a lot of man. Strike on the inside corner. I'm not going to get close to that poster. I'll tell you that. I don't want to be embarrassed. <laughs> JJ Hardy had a double. Thought he had an RBI in his first at bat. It's hard enough interviewing those guys after ball games when we do the starting pitchers. I mean the tall guys. The tall guys. Yeah. Well, they're all tall. tall. <laughs> I try and bring a milk cart when it's the, too hard to carry around. When the bullets were in downtown Baltimore, I mean, became friends with Wesley Unsel, and he was short for NBA <laughs> standards, only six eight. But after a while, oh, about ten minutes after the conversation courtside before they started loosening up, next starts to hurt. Like talking to Randy Johnson. Randy, oh. don't mind sitting down, do you? Six <laughs> ten. And I'll stand up. <laughs> One ball, two strike out on Hardy, and he'll go the other way with that. Put it into the seats. Crowd of 42,500 last night. Not quite as large, it uh, looks like tonight. It was the Garrett Richards uh, bobblehead night last night, I believe. Fireworks tonight, is that right? Yes. Firework night tonight. So we may have a late arriving crowd for that one. One ball, two strike delivery, and came up and got him. Yeah, perfect pitch up and in. Away, 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 in. Kind of read the bat. See where JJ is trying to cover it. So there is our Nissan pitch track. And you could see again the, the almost like it's side to side movement. And then a lot of times when you throw a four seamer and don't cut it, you can almost see the seams kind of all those four seams of just rotating. That's where you get your movement. Here's Ryan Flaherty. He'll take the pitch for a strike. Orioles second time through the lineup. It hasn't made a lot of difference on the year for Richards. 233 the first time, 217 the second, and then back to 233 the third time through. Flaherty will take the off speed pitch, just misses at 78. Called out on strikes his first time up, and Richards, as is true for Jimenez, and a number of these calls looking in, wanting uh, the inevitable question answered. Where was it? Here's the 1 1. Rare back on that one. Yeah, they were talking. I mean, 11 strikeouts uh, against the Indians in seven to third innings. And everybody I talked to, I said, did he maintain his velocity? So, yeah, 96 in the eighth. Pitch on the way, and another one up at 96. So he's got four strikeouts, retires the side in order. Pitches duel underway, and then as goes back to work. The war page. There are your leaders, Bryce Hopper and Mike Trout is in this game, and Manny Machado not far behind. A great list of players right there with Goldschmidt, Donaldson, Kane, and Posey. Yeah, so Trout right behind Donaldson the last two years. Chris Donaldson somehow ends up in Toronto. That'll make your year, you know, to get him from the A's. 
Saw Trout coming out, and there is Manny up there on that list. Value to a ball club, one way to measure. Jimenez goes back to work, and the ball goes to center right at Adam Jones from Calhoun. A pitch in and out here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Post fans never miss a game update behind the scenes moment or exclusive contest. Follow Mass and Orioles on Twitter for all the latest Orioles buzz. That's Mass and Orioles on Twitter. Now, but Show Alder seeing so far the start from Jimenez that he had hoped for only in the fourth inning, but he hasn't given anything up yet. Yeah, Calhoun saw a splitter that stayed up. He goes, I'm going to hit this, and he did. So one pitch, one out. Trout a yeah, strikeout yeah. victim. You know, I asked him today, I said, you had to have played other sports. He said, yeah, basketball and football. And I said, what, running back? He said, no, it was an option quarterback. That would make sense. Yeah. The, the speed he's got. I said, with your arm? Come on. Just kind of laughs at you. Mm hmm. 1 0 delivery mm -hmm. down to third, and he fell down. That one hurt. That caught him, and you saw how far it went, went all the way to third base, even after it hit him. Nate didn't want to get the two strikes, so he swings at that two seamer, and when it runs down and in, look where you hit it. Trying to get the bat head to it, and then he does right off the top of that left foot. Face tells you the, the whole story. Boom. Yeah, we show you the the speed off the bat, but the average ball off the bat at the big league level is what 77 miles per hour. So what if you do that off your foot? Hurts instep knee. One one delivery on the way to him down to third base. Machado will not have a play. It'll be an error charged on Manny Machado as he did not get the glove all the way down and it trickled on through. Yeah, hit pretty sharply, but this is a play because of his expertise. He just didn't catch it. Now a lot of topspin. Get the glove to the ball. Thought he did, didn't. And there's your error. For Manny, number 13 for the ball club, a league leading low of 42 errors committed. You know, I was asking Mike Sosha, I said, why does Trout not run? More than he has, 10 out of 14. He said, "Well, because they slide step, they do all kinds of things to, to keep them from doing that." Obaldo doesn't do that very well. I talked to Don Baylor about that today, and Don said, "Listen, he's a head-first slider. We do not need Mike Trout to get injured at second base trying to steal a base. Stay where you are." That's what they've told him. Now he's got a green light if he thinks he can go yeah. with the last thing they want is trout injured trying to steal a base. Well 17 out of 19 if he's going to run you would think this would be the case. Bull holds up. Foul back. And that was the other thing Don said he said look when you got pool holes behind you. You do not want to make it out on the yeah. base pass. you want to be on base when pool holes is at the plate. Yeah the other thing is Albert. Of course, he has what over 1,550 RBIs. Not one of his better years. 227 runners in scoring position, but he does hit home runs. Grounded out his first time up. And then as delivers to him, another one that just misses. Still looking for their first hit. The Angels have had two base runners, a hit batter, and an error, and a walk. Three base runners, right? And that's been it. One clean inning in the second. For Jimenez. And the other factor here is the more pitches you throw to pull holes, if he's going to run, more opportunity to do it. I'd like to make your pitch early on. Hope he hits one to one of your infielders during the double play. Back to the bag. Jimenez. With the count one and one, if he ends up throwing four or five pitches, there's a good chance Trout may try to steal the base. Bullholz waiting. Long hold, runner goes. Ground ball down to third is fair. Takes a look at second to make sure he stays there. And Pujols is retired. So they get a runner to second. Still having that a hit though, and there are two down. So David Murphy will get the RBI chance. They're first in the ball game. Four for eight with runners in scoring position. 
last night for the Angels. And as you mentioned, nine for 18, Murphy against Oriole pitching in this year. Of course, started the year with Cleveland. Now Murphy gets the chance. And then, as we showed you, the extremely high number since the All Star break in these situations. And the pitch will be taken down low for a ball. I mean, those are pitches when he is going to pitch well that he wants. And I think uh, right there, Caleb is going to make sure number one, we have the signs. Number two, don't let the fact that Jerry Davis won't call an E high strike bother you. It's going to make it hard to pitch, but let's go get him. And then the problem with Trout because of his speed, he's second in the American League with what 78 runs scored. He led the American League in runs scored the last three years. It's almost impossible to throw him out. One-zero -oh count on Murphy. Pitch will be outside for Jimenez before the All-Star break. 181. With runners in scoring position since the All Star break, 588. 2 0 cow with two down. Yeah, league average around in the 250 range. Murphy will take a strike on the inside corner. So, a two ball, one strike count on Murphy. Tight game. These two ball clubs going at it, pitching and defense wise so far. And for the Orioles, that's great news. Jimenez 2 1 delivery will be fouled off. He got a round on that one off that screen in front of the Orioles dugout. Yeah, so again, we always talk about the unpredictability. There are no things as fastball counts. 2 0. Oh, think you might get it. Throws him a splitter. 2 and 1. Think you might get a fastball. Throws him a slider. Way out in front. Murphy coming over July 28 from Cleveland. Just protects on that one and fouls it away. Murphy getting playing time as the DH for the Angels. Pulholz will DH when he gets the day off from playing in the field. They've got four players they can move around outfield DH positions. 2 2 delivery on the way and he got him. And after one up and away, third strikeout for Ebaldo. No runs, no hits, an error, and a base runner left on. Jimenez getting him to chase one up and away. One walk, three strikeouts, our miles to do ups, Joseph Machado and Paula. On Masson, brought to you by the Maryland Fire Chiefs and Maryland State Firemen's Association. Email mdfirevolunteer at gmail.com to volunteer with your local fire rescue and EMS. Anaheim the site game two. The Orioles trying to set it up for a rubber match tomorrow. They lost the opener last night, eight four, in that ball game. And there you see 
The work done by Abaldo Jimenez with the zeros up there. And the Orioles picking up an RBI from Adam Jones and a ground ball out in the third inning. Orioles bat in the top half of the fifth. Caleb Joseph, he picked up a double. Caught in a rundown later in the inning between third and home. Machado and Paro will follow against Richards. Garrett. Pitch on the way and a bouncer out in front. But Matt Weeder's not doing the back to back days catching. Caleb Joseph will get a lot more time in the second half than he might have imagined behind the plate. Ground ball down to third. Gillespie plays very close to the line, so that was right at him. Yeah, it's almost like he knows the curve ball. I didn't see him move. A lot of times infielders would do that. Maybe lean or take a half a step, depending who is pitching. So the first man retired. 70% of those retired by Richards on the year. The Royals have had only one leadoff man on. That was the double by Joseph in the third when they scored. Yeah, this game is kind of settling. And again, he, when we talk about Garrett Richards, loves to pitch here. Seven and two, low ERA, fourth best in baseball at home, 236. Manny Machado has picked up a base hit, scored the run in the third inning, one for two. Manny extends his hit streak to five games with that base hit, and he is now three for nine, lifetime off Richards. Sidearms that thing in, crossed his body, and misses low and away. Slings that pitch. A very fluid windup, though. I mean, watch it just kind of break his hands right over the knees and go. And again, uh, tremendous torque. Manny with the six hits, 13 at bats against the Angels this season, continues to hit in this ballpark with a 320 career average here in Anaheim. One two delivery by Richards to him and just missed the button. Yeah, that would have been bruised ribs. It turned away on that one. Richards with all those wild pitches, he also has got three hit batters. Two seamer boring in on. Two ball, two strike count, one nothing lead. Orioles on top. And off the outside part of the plate, fouls it away. That perfect pitch down the way, and he just flicks it into the stance foul. That's for the pitches, if you're a pitcher, you want hitters to put in play, and Manny didn't cooperate. And thought about going. I don't think it was even close. Will Little down at first base says no. Held up in the breaking ball away, and the count's full three two. Yeah, Matty had Manny has such a quick bat, he can wait. He can react to the ball in, and again, just drive the other one away. Goes after that one to left field. It is way back. David De Jesus at the wall, and goodbye, home run. And go. Darren O'Day gets rid of his hat and uses his glove and makes the catch. Well, I don't know if it was his because it was a left hand. There was a glove, but it worked. So Manny Machado delivers the long ball, and the Orioles have a 2 0 lead in the ballgame. Uh, what did Clint Eastwood said? Hang him, hang him high. And that's what he did. Fouled high curveball. Fouled off all the quality pitches. And then uh, just smacked it for home run number 24. And he's 57th RBI of the year. He continues his power surge this 2015 season. And the Orioles, two runs now and six hits. And a strike taken. Yeah, watch this breaking ball. Again, you don't want it here, but it ends up there in a very hittable location. And he doesn't miss it. Third home run for Manny Lifetime in this ballpark. Oh, one delivery on the way and a swing and a miss on the off speed to Para. And, and runs against the Angels. I mean, as a as a team, it's 
or what a 3.02. Just a tad above three runs a game. Oh, two delivery, another <laughs> bounce of power swung at it on the hop. <laughs> the Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, Frank Racinos, $500 on the home run. And he's celebrating with his good buddy Jonathan Skulp. One two delivery went around on that one. Tag will be put on to the strikeout fifth of the game for Richard. Yeah, now the good breaking ball. Way out in front of home plate, didn't pick up the spin. Easy to do on a quality breaking ball. 13 home runs surrendered by Richards on the year. Seven of those two right handers. And Manny Machado, two for three in the ball game. Now he's had five hits in eight at bats in the first two games of the series. Two down, bases empty. Adam Jones, Adam an RBI and a fielder's choice. His last time up, he's also doubled. Ground ball to short. High bar. Look at it. So that will retire the side, but the Orioles add another. They get a run on a hit. Nobody left on base. Manny Machado drives the baseball to left. And watches it leave the park. Two nothing. Speed up the game and maybe increase some offense. Not much has changed from last year to this year. The runs are up, but just minimally. Strikeout almost exactly the same. Same with walks on base percentage, slugging, and the time of game has been uh, dropped down a bit. But uh, nine minutes that'll yeah that'll work. Well, that certainly worked. But uh, everything else, the offense has remained as was last year. Well, global warming has an effect. Run scored the. It has not. No, not yet. Not yet. Andy Machado is trying to affect it by getting a career high in home runs, working on it. Here's Jimenez to Ibar, and the pitch taken inside. Ibar popped out his first time up. Machado staying in since the Angels have not had a hit yet. Somebody like Ibar would love to be able to lay one down and get one. He tried it the last time and popped out to first base to Flaherty. This time a shattered bat will go to right field. Running catch made by Davis. Yeah, a really good jump for Chris Davis. Got on it and got it. The Orioles are hosting a second social media night Tuesday, August 18, before the Mets game. QA with Zach Britton and Orioles.com writer Brittany Giroli. Plus, you get a game ticket, light fair, and exclusive t-shirt. Tickets start as low as $30. Visit Orioles.com slash Birdland Social to reserve. Yeah, I did the last one. It was really. Uh, you'll probably do, be doing one in September. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking to? You. I, I did July. You, Zach's doing August. And Here's Connor Gillespie. He'll go after the first pitch and drive it in the air to left center field. Para going back. He's there and he's got it two down. 
Well, as I was saying, no. Uh, nice little gets there. Let him hit it in the air and let him run it down. A couple of gold gloves are out there and left. Yeah, you'll like it because it won't be as hot as it was in July when you're out. In no, I like it because I'll be in the broadcast booth with the air conditioning. Will be on. That's why I like it. Two down, nobody on here in the fifth inning. You could just send an emissary that represents. Go you. ahead, you're yeah, it. Thank you. Giovatella lined out to short his first time up. I think we should send Casey Willett. <laughs> well, he is getting done at the end of the year, so I guess we could do that. <laughs> That'll be it. He probably will be premature as far as uh, when do you plan on uh, changing jobs? Casey, the engineer, engineer for, for the broadcast crew on radio, yeah. Joe and Fred. It could be a premature retirement from. Uh, he is a social so, media. Yeah, that's I, what I, I mean. Think. He'd be perfect. In and of himself. 1 0 delivery on the way, and that'll be taken for a strike. Two quick outs here. Menez. Throwing a lot of strikes and Giovatella as a result steps out here just trying to slow it down because this inning could be over in a heartbeat. If it is I'll tweet it. Here's the one one pitch and a ground ball towards short. Hardy gets the hop he'll make the play and it is a one two three inning. Second time in the ball game he has retired the side in order. The Orioles have a two nothing lead. Well above 500 as best you can at home 500 at least on the road and teams over 500 you'd like to be even against them the Orioles are not no and it really is a yardstick on really I, I, whether you're a good team or not so you know, a little over 50 games have changed those numbers yeah you always want to pound the, the teams under 500 but you're right. And then the other number that jumps out, of course, the inability to play like they did last year on the road. Waldo Jimenez over there at the end of the bench. When there are zeros on the board by the opposing yeah. team, the pitcher gets nobody talking to him. And a big swing and a miss by Davis. Chris has drawn a walk and he has grounded out in the game. Richards with the walk, five strikeouts, two runs, six hits the Orioles, and zeros for the Angels. Richards breaking ball is going to miss outside. Chris is up the average closing in on that 250 mark along with all of the big slugging percentage numbers. And the fastball that will be taken up. Two ball one strike count from Garrett Richards up to 79. Pitches thrown so far. Yeah he's trying to run the ball in under Chris Davis's hands. Got one out there that's fouled away. But again, even there, that's his strength. Talking about Chris Davis out over the plate, but the velocity. Sometimes in the movement, hard to keep it in play. And of course, that ability, which is why he's good, and why he can get back into counts with num the number one in the fastball. 2 2 delivery. 
Oh, way back in right field. That one sounded good off the bat. And it'll take a bounce off the scoreboard. Into second base, sliding with a double. Chris Davis, who got it all into the power alley. Well, that is so long gone in Camden Yards. Again, 17 of the home runs for Chris. I mean, you just a, maybe a little cutter. I think he thinks it's going out. It gets off the wall so quickly uh, that Calhoun's going to catch it. He's got an arm. Boy, we've seen this both nights. Trout now. Calcone, of course, he did get the assist throwing out. Rymold trying to go from first to third. So their outfield throws pretty well. Orioles, second time they've had the leadoff man on in an inning. They scored when they did that in the third. Pitch will be taken away by Matt Wieters, 0 for 2. He has popped out, struck out, 3 for 7 now, lifetime against Garrett Richards. Orioles have their seventh hit of the ball game. They've got the 2 nothing lead. Waiters will take that one way outside and high. 2 and 0. Oh. Yeah, one of those games where the handwriting is very evident, and that is you're not getting a lot of runs. Orioles already with seven hits. Should have another run, just slide correctly at home. So they've, they've hit Garrett pretty well. Orioles one for six with runners in scoring position as they have stranded four in the ball game and three of the four were in scoring position. Pretty good lead at second base for Davis. Matt Wieters will take it. It'll be there for a strike going to make him throw one. He had no intention of swinging there and the count goes to three balls and one strike. Well, you'd love to get him in, certainly get him over. Nobody out and scope red hot on deck. They're going to have to, if he does, get him to third base. You're going to have to play your infield in. 3 1 delivery on the way to Matt. That will be there on the corner at the knees at 95 by Garrett Richards. So a three ball, two strike count. They've got the infield shifted around against Matt with. Ibar, the only player on the left side of the diamond on the infield. Full count delivery on the way and fouled off. Yeah, I think he almost wanted to do that. Because that was a ball. I mean, tonight 0 for 2, but came in 3 for 5. This is Matt's average side of the plate normally. He's hit 260 though this year from the left side, 273 right handed. Right handed, three of the five home runs. Three ball, two strike count, step off Richards. And Davis back to the bag. Yeah, you know, Garrett Richards uh, is really, if he can't hunt for a strikeout, Matt wants to make contact, hit the ball to the right side. That one will be. Richards covering first pull holds the flip just gets it there he's safe he came off the bag well you got to understand this is the way and they got him to second base the tag yeah, not in down. time heads up Matt Wieters with all of the infielders pulled over to first Ibar was over at third there was nobody at second and Wieters took advantage of it. The race was on. And then right here, of course, you know, last August 20th, he actually tears his patellar tendon. This is the rest of the year. So very uh, tentative about going over. You can see Wayne Kirby. And then look at this from deep right center field. And, uh, you know, again, that's not, that's the third baseman. That was uh, Connor Gillespie. Gillespie was playing deep on the shift at yeah. second base. Wayne Kirby. Immediately signaled safe at first, and so did Will Little, the first base umpire. And then he was hollering. Way well, was that Wieters second like base is open, and Mike Sosha will not be happy about that. Yeah, one of those freak plays. You know, they always talk about we put on shifts. Buck Showalter talks about it all the time. Everybody has to know. You have to kind of almost. Envision when you work in spring training every conceivable play that can happen. That might not have been on the list. Now the infield is drawn in as a result. Here is scope. Nobody out. 
Jonathan will take it outside for a ball. It's an error charge. On the first baseman pool host Cambodrosian just getting up to throw in the bullpen. So an error. Pool Allowing leaders to reach and get down to second base. And a swing and a miss by Jonathan on the 96. Boy, if ever there was such a thing as a team error, that was probably yeah. it right there. And I think the other factor is Garrett Richards, you're kind of watching him come off the mound and you care the patellar a little bit more gingerly covering first than in years past. And a foul tip at the plate. And of course that you know he's he can be a strikeout guy. We told you his last game 11. Well, the pitch count, yeah, it's 91, but this is when you can, if you're gifted, and he does have a gift as far as the ability to pitch, he's looking to strike out Jonathan Scope. Runners off second and third. The infield stays in. Richards delivery. Trying to get him to go after one, kept it up and away with no intent to throw a strike on that pitch. And yeah, perfect pitch outside corner or nothing. Two ball, two strike count. Big moment in the ball game. That'll be put up in the air. Should get a run in. Trout coming over to get it, tagging up. Davis. Throw will come into third base. Job done. Jonathan Scope, RBI, and a sack fly, and the Orioles extend their lead to 3 0. Yeah, it took a pretty good breaking ball and just did exactly what you want. Obviously, the bonus would have been a, to do more, but you don't want to strike out. You want to make contact. He does all of those things and hits it deep enough where Trout can't throw out the third run at the plate. So Jonathan Scope gets it in. Weeders had a stay. Throw came into third base. Jonathan picking up his 18th RBI in the 32 games played. One down. Weeders on at second base and the pitch will be outside to J.J. Hardy. Hardy with a double and he has struck out. Orioles three runs on seven hits now. Evaldo is pitching. A little room for Jimenez. 1 0 delivery. Hardy up and into him. Fouls it right straight back. Yeah, he saw a hanging curveball and jumped all over it to foul the back. Well, the heads up base running by Matt Weeders gets him exactly where he is in the scoring position. One for seven for the Orioles in these situations so far tonight. Hardy on the end of the bat and foul. The one ball, two strike count, still only one away in the inning. Lead off double by Davis. Jimenez right now hoping for some more. And a little more leeway to throw strikes. Not trying to hold Weeders at second base. He's walking off a pretty good lead when Garrett Richards delivers. Here's the one two delivery to Hardy and up a little higher that time. Six strikeouts. Uh, so he gets them to go up over. I mean, this is helmet high and. Just chase. You, you, you want to get the run in. You want to be aggressive, and sometimes those things happen. You see the head shake. Well out of the zone. Two down. That'll leave it up to Flaherty. Brian has struck out twice over his last 28. Weeders will have to stay a little closer at second. I bar is the shortstop's right behind him, having moved around on the shift. And the pitch will be down low for a ball. Right back with you tomorrow for the day game. Orioles hoping it will be the rubber match. Three o'clock goes extra. Three thirty for the ball game. Mass and two. Miguel Gonzalez, Jared Weaver. Tillman is going to be put off till the middle game in Seattle on Tuesday. 1-0 delivery, and that misses outside for a ball. So a 2 0 count on Ryan Flaherty. See if he gets one to hit.
Two down, 2 0 pitch. Flaherty will take that one for a strike. Now he's thrown so many breaking balls. That was pitched 100 when he's got behind Oriole hitters, and maybe when you're working on a couple of strikeouts and an 0 for 28, you're looking for a breaking ball. 2 1 delivery to him, and that'll lean him back. So Richards. Falls behind on Ryan Flaherty three and one with that hundred and first pitch delivered. Yeah, the scoreboard uh, with no runs from the Angels column has really made every pitch matter. Two ball, one strike count. That's say Jack greeting fans with the blue shirt behind home plate. 3-1 <laughs> delivery on the way and the inside corner. So the count goes full three and two. Three two two down. There's Wheaters on at second base. Ryan Flaherty trying to get him home. Outfield fairly deep on Flaherty. And a ground ball towards the middle where they're not. Cut off. Nice play made by Ivar, who had been moved over towards second base. So the Orioles will pick up a run. They do it on one hit and error, and will leave a base runner on, extending their lead to three nothing. One nothing Orioles make it two nothing. New left fielder Darren O'Day snags it out in the bullpen. Manny's 24th home run. Ovaldo really struggling the last four starts since the All Star break tonight. A little bit different. As he uh, he goes into the sixth inning, the Angels still yet to get a hit. 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. The zeros. For Ivaldo Jimenez. And the pitch, a strike on the inside corner. Bottom half of the sixth inning, Perez, who drew a walk his first time up, hitting ninth, their catcher, then De Jesus and Calhoun. Oh, on delivery to him towards the middle. Hardy's going to have to make a tough play here, throw over, and he got him. Plenty of time. Yeah, he gets to it, and then a little different arm angle. We see, uh, in fact, we've seen a couple of plays because of the speed factor. Where boy, he just gets rid of it. Maybe three-quarter arm delivery, but right on the money. So one away, six inning to Jesus, hit by a pitch and hit into a double play. Two base runners left on, only one having reached second in the game. That was in the fourth inning when Trout made it down to second base. One away, David to Jesus. Now one four seven off Jimenez with speed breaking ball misses ball one Machado in at third the outfield shallow 
Yeah, he just wants to get on. They, they did such a nice job in the back end of their lineup last night. Of just table setting for each other. As we mentioned, eight runs, five of them came with two outs. Kevin Gosman uh, talking with him after the game mentioned uh, how disappointed he was with what he did with the bottom third of the order, and that's not disrespectful to them, but he gave up the uh, home run to Crone in the seventh spot. RBI, a couple of hits, Giovatella in the eighth spot. Ionetta had a two RBI double in the ninth spot. Doesn't mean guys at the bottom of the order can't no. get it done, but you really don't like to give up those kind of numbers. Well, there. as you mentioned, they were struggling for runs coming in the last night, last five games, about 2.6 runs a game, and then everybody joined the party. 13 hits last night. That will come inside. And we all know when the when the Angels or the Orioles, when you get a bunch of hits and then you get the two out RBIs, and you get five of those coming of their eight runs. It's when your offense looks pretty good. Two ball, two strike count. Jimenez delivers to it, and uh, he got him. Yep. Strikeout number four. Yeah, it's been a tiny strike zone, but again, the knees are the D's. And this ball's right down the middle, and even though the target's away, did Caleb just kind of catch it at the bottom of the zone? This will be a nice little definitive angle right here. And again, uh, front knee, back knee, right about the knees. So Jimenez gets two away here in the sixth inning. That'll bring up Calhoun. Calhoun has flied out it into a fielder's choice. Cole Calhoun, their right fielder, goes after the first pitch and fouls it away. The Angels here at home this year, 35 and 22, real good home record. They've done it with some outstanding pitching here at home. ERA. At home is 3.02. They score 3.98 runs, so it's just enough of a differential to win. 0-1 delivery on the way, and it'll be inside. Yeah, they were. I mean, they almost got to four runs a game with eight last night. But it's about pitching here. We all know you just have to ultimately. CJ Wilson looking on. Uh, score one more than you give up. And Jimenez will miss outside with it. Two ball, one strike count. Keeping that pitch count reasonable at 81. Trying to get through this sixth inning. It's not going to go any further with Trout waiting on deck. Two on delivery on the way. And that is whacked to center field. Jones turns around, going back, way back. It'll bounce off the top of the wall. Calhoun goes into second base, and there goes the no-hitter as the Angels get their first hit with two down in the sixth inning. And that's pretty much what you have to do. I mean, always he did pitch a no-hitter back in April of 2010. But you're thinking, okay, I gotta throw a strike because I know who's on deck. They got 32 home runs and 30 home runs, and you're right about this ball being just shot out of a cannon. And Adam Jones plays it on the one hop. So the first hit for the Angels will bring Trout up. He reached on an error. And he is struck out. And will take the pitch inside for a ball. Pools waiting on deck. Leagues home run leader. And we've got one number 33 last night. Taking it is in their first strike. That's what Don Baylor talked about his hitting instructor. He said he likes to take the first strike. One ball, one strike delivery on the way, and that's right there. 90 mile an hour pitch. And a one ball, two strike count. At the 85 thrown in the ball game. Yeah, the ball goes never going to match radar readings with uh, Garrett Richard. One two delivery and a swing and a miss and he got him. That's five strikeouts and two of those have been against Trout. He gets him with a runner left on no runs one hit no errors and a runner left at second. 
Trout down on the new ups. Joseph Machado and Parra. For 12, so Orioles really rough them up, kind of typical of what went on in the, the first game he pitched against the Orioles. So, you know, a lot of strikes. Our AT&T call of the bullpen, AT&T proud partner of the Baltimore Orioles, AT&T mobilizing your world. So Cam Bedrosian comes on. Well, a lot of fastballs. Why not? Throws 95 to 98, and then the power curveball. Well, he's been up and down, I think, three times this year. And Mike Soldier says, very simple. He came in on uh, Tuesday. He gave up uh, Giovanni Ursella, who plays third base for Cleveland. He gave up a break, hanging breaking ball. Mike said, tighten up the breaking ball. Or you're going back to Triple A. He worked on it with Mike Butcher before the game and got the win that afternoon. So he throws hard with a power hook. First major league win came on the game Wednesday against Cleveland. His dad, an outstanding major league pitcher, Steve Bedrosian, Cy Young Award winner in 87 with the Phillies. Cam Bedrosian's pitch is in there for a strike. Caleb Joseph, a double, and he is grounded out. Manny Machado and Parra, we're in the seventh inning. 3 7 and 1 for the Orioles, 0 1 and 1 for the Angels. Five left on by the O's, three by the Angels. And back into the screen off the bat of Caleb Joseph. Orioles, a couple of games over 500. Hanging in on the race against the Yankees, who were shut out by Toronto today. It's Toronto in second place now. Orioles in third. 0 2 delivery. Caleb will take the pitch and Bedrosian up high. Yeah, 29th uh, player picked in 2010, and Tommy John missed all the following year. Next year became a starter, 27 starts, and then to the bullpen. Pitch on the way, breaking ball outside. Yeah, that's the, the one they wanted him to be able to kind of uh, tighten up a little bit. Ball went straight down, but off the plate. Cardinals won again today. They are the first team to reach 70. In fact, they reached 71 wins today. 71 and 39. Six game lead over the Pirates who are playing some pretty good baseball. Pitch on the way, taken. Good eye. That one's going to miss down low. So a three ball, two strike out on Caleb Joseph. Leading off the inning for the Orioles. Trying to get on. The Orioles would like to put up more runs, obviously, with that power lineup of the Angels. In the air to right. Calhoun. Joseph is retired. First out of the inning. Get ready to show your orange from head to toe on Friday, August 21. First 20,000 fans, 15 and over, at the game against the Twins. Get a pair of Orioles high socks. 
It's a fashion statement. You can enjoy a great night out and add to that wardrobe. So get your tickets at Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. High Sox. Down there with the Baldo Jimenez. Yeah, old school. Yep. Pitch taken away for a ball. Here's Manny Machado, home run number 24, came in the fifth inning. A two for three ball game, five for eight in the first two games of this series. The Drosian's delivery to him will be on the inside corner. So with the two hits in this ball game, he's now had seven hits and 19 at bats against the Angels ball club this season. The draws in with a 1 1. Chano will take it down low for a ball. This Angels team has been shut out this season eight times. Kind of in the middle of the pack in that regard, despite their high powered offense. Two ball, one strikeout. Chano the other way foul. Yeah, even if you're looking fastball, you can get an idea that Bedrosian, that one's only 94, but he's hit 98. Pitch on the way, Bedrosian inside. Talking about the Toronto win over the Yankees today, they're now two and a half games behind the Yankees for the division lead, Toronto is. They have won six of the eight times they played this year, and they have 11 more games yeah. remaining against the Yankees. Well, the Yankees, it's no sure thing that they're going to. Three two choppers, second base, no dice, base hit. Yeah, when you have those kind of games and Toronto loads up the way they have, and the Yankees, you know, we saw Luis uh, Severino, a young power pitcher. Boy, here you go, a little top spin. You can see Gia Vitella. Trying to get to it, but couldn't do it. So you just don't know. If you don't play well, you can drop very precipitously, very quickly. Well, another three hit ball game for Manny Machado. Three for five last night, three hits in the ball game tonight. Manny now has had 10 three hit games. That's his 36th multi hit game of the year. The Orioles, eight hits in the game. The Drosians pitch to Para. 0 for 3 in the ball game. For Para, and he takes the first pitch for a strike. The Orioles have been piling up the hits in ball games, even when they've lost of late, like last night, and they had 12. 0-1 delivery on the way to Empire will take that. That too is going to be in there for a strike. So Bedrosian gets ahead of him 0-2. Manny Machado is now eighth in the league in multi-hit games. With the three hits in this one. 0-2 delivery. 96 up high. Not a big lead at first. The Grosin will throw over, Manny leaning a little bit towards second. And he's got 15 steals. Grosin, only 23 years old. He was ranked as the third best prospect in the Angels organization coming into this season. 1 2 delivery on the way, and that time he fooled him with an 81 breaking ball. Yeah, that's the hook that Mike Sosha talked about. Better come up with it. Better tighten it up. And able to do that. He just dropped it outside corner. 
Stayed away, away, away on that at bat by Parra. Here's Adam Jones. Adam a double, an RBI, and a ground ball up. And another ground ball out in the game. So one for three in the ball game. Manny Machado with two down at first base. And then as the Oriole starter getting a rest and hoping for another run. Runner goes. Throw down is there and he's out. So Machado caught by Perez. We had plenty of time to lay that one in. Second baseman Giovadella put the tag on. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. Seventh inning stretch time. The Orioles three angels nothing. Gonzalez on the mound. Jared Weaver returning for the Angels. All right, coverage. Mass and two, three o'clock goes extra. Presented by Jeep. Our game at 3:30. All the access you need right here on Mass. Yeah, so Gonzo coming off a game where he didn't really push that poorly, but he didn't score a lot of runs up in Oakland. Jared Weaver, one of those tough years, and then of course he's been injured, so he'll come back off the DL. And then Ubaldo trying to get out. Last speed pitch slipped that time. Here is Albert Pujols. Pujols 0 for 2. Now 6 for 24 with a home run lifetime off Jimenez. The ball does average four, five and two thirds innings per start this year, but has had some ball games where he's been able to go into that eighth inning. He has pitched uh, eight innings for a season high this year. Pujols will follow back. And you certainly don't mind having a three nothing lead with Albert Pujols up and nobody on base. Yeah, that's the way you want to pitch to him. You want to throw him strikes. And obviously you want to keep the ball in the ballpark. Right handers delivery to him will be a base hit into left field. Bottom of the seventh lead off single. And as promised earlier in the game we've selected the data strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to O's Couch Cam. You might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. It's the bird. Is it ever? So a runner on with hit number two. Here's Murphy, a struck out and popped out. And then Murphy will take the pitch for a strike. Veteran taking a look. Gary, Gary DeSarcina, third base coach. 0 1. Yes, misses yeah. outside. And the things you look for if you're seeing if the ball is tiring, is he getting behind hitters? Is the ball elevated? And also see it, but you don't probably have a very short lease with a 3 0 lead. How the hitters are reacting to it. That ball looped in the air to left field. Power coming on. He's got it. 
Runner back and one away. The Scotty Ready telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. And there's another look is the body language. You know, whether a guy, you know, in this day and age, and, and Obado's not one of these guys. I mean, a lot of times uh, you start looking, see, was anybody warming up, looking in the dugout? But he just would love to be able. I mean, tough to double up Ibar because of his speed. Flaherty playing in front of the runner at first base with a lefty up there. Ibar has popped out and flied out. Pujols, not a base stealer, the runner, so the Orioles want to cut down on that hole between first and second for Eric Ibar to try and put a ball through. Yet they keep Flaherty close enough to take a throw. Ball put up in the air and into the seats foul. Where do the Orioles hope what they're seeing in this one from Jimenez is what they'll see the rest of the way of day getting ready. Yeah, it's funny when he started struggling, he knows you get anxious, you want to do well, front shoulder doesn't stay closed, head goes left, stuff flattens out. Really hasn't been the case tonight. I mean, it started where he pulled the second pitch of the game and hit uh, David DeJesus, and you're going, oh, here we go again. 11 first run, first inning runs over the last four starts, but then steady the ship. And deep into the ball game here in the bottom of the seventh inning. One ball, two strike count. High bar at the plate, oh, and I'm hitting. Well, there's another thing. They, they love to come in and they're just looking for base runners and late on the fastball away, trying to make the perfect pitch. And now all of a sudden you get the tying run coming to the plate. Three nothing is not a big lead. Not late. So again, just trying to start it in, hit the inside corner. And it gets the uniform, maybe a little bit of the stomach for a guy bar. So Gillespie up. Gillespie a strikeout, flyed out, second hit batter of the game by Evaldo Jimenez, seventh hit batter of the year. Gillespie with the full home runs. He is five for 18, lifetime off Jimenez. As the Angels try and get one on the board here in the seventh inning, that ball's going to be popped up. He went after the first pitch. Hardy, he's got it. And a big out. Yeah, that's got to drive you crazy if you're the Angels. Kind of a weak effort in a sense. I mean, just not a lot of fast speed feel for the first pitch. Chance to get back in the game, and the Orioles will take that out. Thank you very much. Caleb Joseph talking with his battery mate. Gio Vitella stands in. He has lined out and grounded out. 0 for 3 for the Angels with runners in scoring position. And Giovatella gets a shot. Yeah, like got the big hit last night early on. They tied it up 3 3. And of course, he's over 300 in runners in scoring position numbers. And we'll take the pitch down low. Giovatella, five game hit streak coming into the ball game, has not added to it here in this game. Their second baseman. Out of New Orleans, coming over from Kansas City last year. 27 years old. Pitch is there for a strike. We have a tell thought that might have been a little high. Yeah, the irony of that is a better high ball hitter. So there it is. Next pitch going to be 101. One ball, one strike, two away. Pujols, lead runner, high bar on it first. Givatella grounds it to short. Hardy's got a force, scope at second, and that's that. So he works through a uh, problem inning. No runs on one hit, no errors. Two are left on base, seven complete with the Orioles up 3 nothing.
MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball up to the moment at any moment. You get to look at uh, stat cast, replay reviews, hear radio broadcasts, and more. MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Gary Thor, Jim Palmer with you here in Anaheim. Dave Wallace, pitching coach over with Evaldo Jimenez. He came in with an ERA in this ballpark of 9.8. He was 0 2 here in Anaheim, and he has just painted it perfectly for the Orioles so far in this ballgame. Yeah, and also a, another willing listener was Caleb Joseph, who's done a nice job behind the plate tonight. So the Orioles will have Adam Jones leading it off, eighth inning. Davis and Wheaters to follow. A double, an RBI, and a ground ball. Officially one for three. Adam goes to right field. Calhoun. Pitching an out in the eighth. Pedrosian, who came on in relief of Richards, who gave up the three runs, seven hits over six, working in his second inning. Chris Davis a double a walk and he has grounded out just missed a home run last time up and he put one off the wall and stung it hard putting the average up to 249. You get an idea of how much bigger the ballpark here in, is in Anaheim than the one in Baltimore because he crunched it. I, I can't imagine. I don't know. I mean Josh Hamilton maybe he was injured but. I think the last left hander that really had a big year. As we look at Rainbow's 18 scoreless relief innings in a row for him. And the pitch on the outside corner for a strike to Chris. No short porch here in Southern California. Well, professionally. Maybe Pony League. You'd really have to go short. A very short distance that you have. Before it starts widening out. Two ball, one strike count. Three nothing Orioles lead. They got on the board in the second inning. Thought they had two runs, ended up with only one that they thought they were going to have. Thrown out at the plate. Jonathan Scope called safe, challenged, ruled out that he never touched the plate. So the Orioles in the third finally plated one that mattered. And Jimenez by shutting down the Angels has made the three run stand up. Need a telephone for that conversation. <laughs> well, he, you know, now that the no hitter is no longer a no hitter, people are talking to him and, <laughs> and he's answering. I always like to talk to people because, you know, you're a little anxious. I mean, you want to focus. I don't, I don't mean I want to talk to a Weaver, but I wanted to talk to some of my teammates. Or Van George Bamford, the pitching coach, and you know, have a conversation. And especially if I just given up two or three runs in that inning. Help. And 9 1 1. 3 2 delivery and a breaking ball. So Davis is on, second walk. This is going to help Chris along the way because he has become more patient. But like Joe Walter talking about that. That's the reason he's been on a tear at the plate. He's getting better pitches to hit because he's not chasing. And that's showing up in the walk department. Pitchers will see that and begin to believe they may have to throw some strikes. So on his way out, Skipper, Mike Sosha will make the change here. Bedrosian will come out of there having worked an inning in a third, one hit, one strikeout, and one walk. Ramos will come on to do the pitching, and Weeders will be coming to the plate. Orioles lead it 3 0.
working on 18 consecutive scoreless appearances and certainly like to continue to that. And again, the inherited runner numbers has come in with 40 on base, only five of scored, so incredibly low number. You can see the incredibly low ERA. Righties and lefties pretty much hitting in the south, the, the same. So he comes over from uh, Tampa Bay, so the Orioles certainly have had experience with it. Ramos will appear against the Orioles for the first time this year. And Matt Wieters will be coming up against him. He does have an inherited runner, Davis, on at first base, drawing the walk. Only one down. Wieters has reached on an error, popped out, and struck out. Ramos with the infield at double play depth behind him will get the first pitch in there for a strike. Wieters with a one for seven offing in his career. Yeah, he can change speeds. He can pitch out, cut it a little bit, turn it over. A very directed <laughs> throw towards <laughs> first base. Of course, last night we saw Jose Alvarez. We saw Trevor Gott, who got the win. Corey Rasmus, Salas. You can see there. Set up guy at least to watch Joe Smith and then the closer of Houston, Houston Street. A one delivery to Wieters down low. Jared Weaver will be the starter tomorrow for the Angels. He and Ramos were teammates. That's a pretty good couple of pitchers at Long Beach State back in 03 04 where they played college ball. One ball, one strike, one down. Runner goes. Waiters takes. Here's the throw. Not going to get him. Over the bag he goes, but reaches back and a stolen base. Chris Davis. They were not paying attention. Yeah, he just goes on the first move, and this time uh, Perez doesn't make a good throw. I don't know if it would have made any difference anyway. All tailing a little bit. But Chris Davis showing off his speed, gets his first stolen base. Good jump. That'll be his 14th major league stolen base. He had a couple last year. Two ball, one strike count. Weeders, he'll get a base hit into left field. De Jesus up. Davis stops at third base. So the Orioles with one away here in the eighth inning have runners on at first and third. Yeah, last time Jonathan Scope uh, was able to come to the plate, got a sacrifice flies. Runners at second and third. Able to hit a fly ball to uh, Mike Trout. Boy, the Orioles love to add to it here with that three-nothing lead. We're in the eighth inning. Scope coming up with the chance to do it. He's been hitting the ball hard. He's one for five off Ramos. And he'll play back for the double play. With the, you can imagine Gillespie will probably play even with a bag down to third. Maybe creep in a little bit. One down. That's going to be hit the center. Trout. That'll get a run in. Trout reaching up makes the catch. Tagging up Davis. He'll score. Sack fly. RBI. Scope said a two RBI ball game with two sack flies. Yeah, he really smoked that ball. I'll tell you what, Danny gives him a high five. They were out early running, getting their conditioning today. Best of friends, and they're hitting like it. He didn't even hesitate here. You know, last time he had to hit a uh, two strike curveball. Ramos tries to get in on him and he's waiting. Those are the two first sacrifice flies Jonathan Scope has had this year. So a two RBI ball game for Scope. He's got 19 on the year. And the Orioles extend the lead to 4 nothing. Leader stays at first base. J.J. Hardy. And Hardy will take it outside for a ball. Four runs, nine hits for the Orioles. No runs, two hits for the Angels. Hardy a double, one for three. A couple of strikeouts. Delivery down to third. Ooh, what a pick made. Gillespie gets it, goes to second for the force out. A run in, a hit. It was the walk to Davis that resulted in the run and scoped the RBI.
York will never forget or forgive. Walter O'Malley announced the Dodgers would play in Los Angeles and thus began baseball's migration west. And in 1922, the Pirates collected 46 hits in a doubleheader, a major league record in a sweep of the Phillies, 7 3 in the opener, 19 hits. They added 29 hits in the second game, winning it 19 to 8. Abaldo Jimenez remains out for the Orioles. And the pitch taken for a strike, bottom half of the eighth inning. Top of the uh, bottom of the order, then up to De Jesus at the top. Perez a walk, and he is grounded out. Jimenez has been so efficient. But this is only the third time to the plate for Perez, the number nine hitter. O'Day had been up the only bullpen action the Orioles had. They've sent him back down. They'll but Showalter, I'm sure, will hold, hoping Jimenez can get through this inning. One ball, two strikes. And the pitch will be outside. Count goes 2 2. Magnificent outing. Here's the season high in tonight. Five yeah, shy. 22 runs in his last four starts. If he forgot about it. 2 2, foul back. We talked about it. Ubaldo had never beaten the Angels. Still hasn't because you got to get six more outs. Richards has never beaten the Orioles. Two ball, two strike delivery on the way. Fouled off. And as we said, Richards is magnificent pitching here in this ballpark. The ball was not. The Angels are hot. And with their bats, the Orioles were not so clearly. The Orioles had the advantage yeah. in this game. They play well here. The Orioles don't play well on the road. <laughs> Foul back. And downstairs it goes. Two and two. A little jumpy. After that shot up here last night, it turned well, I mean, right up yeah. jumpy. It's like you had a, you've been hit by one or two too many jabs. Well, that's not it, but. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that's inside. Didn't quite hit him. Base runners, what they need here. Yeah, it drops down and it just spins, and he, so does he. Carlos Perez spinning out of the way. And to short, Hardy. And he'll get him. Yeah, the. Uh, the ability to just time balls and set yourself. Boy, I mean, just makes him. This is why he's a gold lover. You know, it's a couple steps to his right. He plays it, catches it, same time on his right foot, backhands it, and then a long, accurate throw. First out recorded. De Jesus at the top of the order. Hit by a pitch to start the ball game. A swing and a miss. Jimenez showing no signs of any negatives out there on the mound. Not tiring. Velocity up, throwing strikes, and getting ahead. The Jesus is hit into a double play, struck out since being hit by a pitch, and an 0 2 count. Yeah, that third inning double play after the walk. For Perez, right, the only walk of the night is huge. It was one nothing. It was anybody's game. 0 2 count. Goes up. He got him. He's just baffling the Angel hitters right now, and there are two down. Well, Jess, you get into a rhythm. Uh, you know, a ball is about 6 5. Uh, and again, I mean, watch the head. You know, he always spins a little bit left, but if he can just make sure the arm gets out in front, which has been the case pretty much all night, the stuff really plays at this level. Two down, base is empty, bottom of the eighth inning. Cole Calhoun, a double. He broke up the no hitter with two outs in the sixth inning. And will take the pitch for a strike. The only eight inning performance this year came against Cleveland. No runs, four hits, eight innings. 
trying to equal that here, doing it even a little better. He's only given up two hits in this one. Foul back. Oh, 2 count with two down. Infield will move on the count, putting the full shift on against Calhoun. Oh, 2 pitch on the way up high. Angels winners of three of their last four ball games. Orioles. Nine and four in their last 13. One two delivery on the way and that's going to be in the dirt. The pacing manager. Here's the two two delivery in the breaking ball. Jimenez. A trouble out of the glove and a fine play by Flaherty. As he gunned that, spiked it really kind of smiling. He'll head over to thank his first baseman, Ryan Flaherty, for making that catch. Can't get it out of my glove. But he got the out. A one, two, three inning. Orioles up. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Lovaldo Jimenez looking for the win, which would be his ninth of the year. Congratulated by his teammates, manager. A shot out on two hits through eight innings, and he will be out of the ball game. The Orioles. That against Ramos, the left-hander. As we go to the top of the ninth inning. Ryan Flaherty, Flaherty 0 for 3 in the ball game. Then Caleb Joseph and uh, Manny Machado at the top of the order. Flaherty a 1 for 3, a home run off this left-hander in his career, outside for a ball. So the Orioles within three outs of setting up the rubber match for tomorrow's game. Three o'clock goes extra. 3:30 the ball game. Miguel Gonzalez and Jared Weaver. Schedule starters for the Sunday day game. We'll pop that one back and out of play. The Drosian worked uh, an inning and a third. Gave up a walk that scored, charged with that run on a hit. One two delivery. And Flaherty way out in front on that one. Yeah, he's got four pitches. He actually uh, started, uh, what, a six or seven games for Tampa last year with all the arm injuries they had. This is a slow hook. 69 miles per hour. You could see Ryan trying to just keep the hands back, but the front side already gone because of the break and the speed. 
Here is Caleb Joseph. Joseph got a hold of that one to left field to Jesus back. And goodbye, home run. Caleb Joseph got one down the middle and he drove it. And the Oriole catcher continues his magnificent offensive performance for the Orioles. Tenth home run, 38th RBI. Yeah, he's hit four in the last 10 days, and they're almost all inside and a little bit around the knees. He goes such a big strike zone, and they keep throwing it there, and he doesn't miss it. So the Orioles extend that lead to five nothing. And Frank Racinos, our Maryland lottery contestant, another 500. Yeah, it's almost like he's become a left handed hitter where, you know, lefties notoriously low ball hitters. They drop the bat head. Have a look right here. Maybe a little cutter or something, but it's down and in. And Caleb must be a pretty good golfer because he just golfs that one right out of here. Five nothing lead for the Orioles. Two home runs in the ball game. Manny Machado and Caleb Joseph. And in the Orioles, a little more cushion to go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Yeah, that breaks the 18 consecutive uh, scoreless appearance for Mr. Ramos. 1 1 delivery on the way to Manny, and that's going to be a base hit. So Manny's got a four hit ball game. Three singles and a home run for Machado, who is hit in five consecutive games now. Boy, he's tagging it. For Manny, that is his first four hit ball game of the year. And the Orioles again in double digits. That's 11 hits for the Orioles. And Pyra will get a shot now at Ramos. He's one for one against him. Yeah, what so what that makes the 43rd game. The Orioles have gotten 10 or more. I got that number today. Tigers came in to today leading with 52 games. One down. And the pitch will be taken down low for a ball. Well, the offense coming through in this ball game tonight. Darren O'Day, second time up, so he'll be coming in to pitch for the Orioles. 1 0 delivery. Barra gets ahead on the count 2 0. Two zero, the count, and a swing and a miss. Good movement down and away that time. Two and one on Pyra. Pyra trying to keep his four-game hit streak alive has not done so yet with the 0 for four that he has taken in the ball game. Runner off first, two on delivery. Three and one. Orioles now have had 10 or more hits in seven of their last nine games. Well, this offense has been pounding the ball. Pitching had given up a lot, but not in this one. Pyre goes towards second base. You have a teller. I buy Pools. So that'll do it. The Orioles are going to get a run on a couple of hits. Caleb Joseph, double digits and homers. And the Orioles have a 5 0 lead, three outs away from a W.
Five nothing lead for the Orioles and for Evaldo Jimenez as good an outing as he's had this year. Yeah, it really is. You know, I ran into Mark Langston uh, in the hallway about an inning ago. He goes, he had to throw the same pitch twice all night. And, you know, so he mixed his stuff up. A lot of breaking balls, totally unpredictable. Up and down, in and out. Meanwhile, the Orioles offense gives him five runs to work with. So there are the numbers, only to walk to the Carlos Perez. No hitter going into the sixth. And now Darren O'Day comes in and of course this is not a safe situation but uh, one of the more effective guys in the American League outstanding job as always you name it the ERA you know, low batting averages keeps the ball in the ballpark and again uh, last uh, pitch to uh, what three days ago up in Oakland so. David Lowe comes on to play left field. Pyra, who had been there, will move over to right. And we go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Here is Trout, who will take the pitch for a strike. And then has held him down with a couple of strikeouts and reached on an error. So Mike Trout held out of the offense by the Orioles starter. As Jimenez awaits victory number nine. 0 oh, 1 delivery. Trout plays off the pitch. It'll be away. Other thing, of course, it's been done by the eight inning performance of the Orioles starters protecting that bullpen. One ball, one strike. Trout lashes it to the gap. That'll be a base hit. Low over to get it. The trout on with a single to lead off the bottom of the ninth inning. Yeah, that's the batting practice swing where he just waits and waits. You know, use uh, left center, right center. And that's the way, to, if you can, to try to hit Darren O'Day. The Angels did not get a hit in this ball game until they were two down in the sixth inning. Calhoun broke up the no hitter by Evaldo Jimenez. They've not had many chances in the game. They've left five on base. Albert Pools, one of their hits, base hit, seventh inning, one for three in the game. O'Day's delivery to Pools, taking first strike. So the double by Calhoun, the single by Pools, and now the single by Trout are the only Angel hits. Who also for three off O'Day. And he'll take the pitch away for a ball. Yeah, Chris Davis, uh, he just moves in from right to first base on Flaherty. He can play everywhere, but if you're with us last night, Chris making some outstanding plays on first base. One ball, one strike count on Pools. Today's pitch will be way outside to it. Albert continuing the home run countdown, five away from Manny Ramirez, who's 14th all time in home runs. Pools obviously still dangerous in that regard, and that's why those runs on the board for the Orioles, one in the eighth and one in the ninth, make it a very different game. Two and one. Today's pitch to him. That's going to go to right. And it'll be a base hit. Nice cutoff made by Para. And the Angels have runners at first and third with nobody out. You know, that's only the 16th hit that Albert Pohlholz has got to right field. So he gets one last night. And there's your closer. So again, nice approaches by both Trout and then Albert Pohlholz right behind him. Hit number four for the Angels. Trying to avoid their ninth shutout of the year. Murphy up first and third. 0 for three in the ball game, two for seven in the two games. Trout pulls the base runners. Infield, of course, playing for two. David Murphy will go after it and miss. Murphy, too, has not had a hit 
Off O'Day. He is 0 for 4. Yeah, pretty black and white. Uh, the Orioles and Darren O'Day on the mound now are hunting for three. Three outs. With a five run cushion. High bars the on deck batter. Here's the 0 1 delivery. O'Day will miss outside with it. Frustrated with himself. On the two hits to lead the inning off. Well, he's a command guy. He's not overpowering. You know, if he's probably the top velocity is going to be 88, but it's in and out and up and down. Movement, sink it, ride it, frisbee it with a little breaking ball. One one runner goes. Ball put up in the air to center. Jones tagging Trout. He'll come. Here's the throw by Jones and got in underneath it. Wow. Pretty close. So for the moment at least they sack fly for David Murphy to make it a 5 1 ball game. Well that was all about him getting thrown out last night. So I'll make a good throw and well, I had no idea it was going to be this close. Boom. And the other thing is pole holes. He went down to second. He's going back to first as this is ensuing. I'll tell you what, he may be out. I'm not sure you're going to challenge it, but uh, I'm not sure that foot got down. And he is. So Buck Showalter will challenge the call. Boy, what, a, what an irony. So again, why not? Nine Nothing inning. to lose here. Yeah, I mean, look at the right leg. It's up. And I'm not sure if he tags him before. The right leg. This is kind of like Jonathan Scope. The Orioles lost a run in the second inning when Mike Sosha challenged on a hardy double that looked as though it had scored Scope. Scope on the replay was called out. And he may be called yeah. out right here. I think he's out. And the, the left foot never hits the plate. And he's already been tagged. I think they're going to reverse this. Boy, wouldn't that be something? Adam Jones watching the replay on the big board. Well, I'll tell you what, Adam Jones has won four goal goals. This mean maybe as good a throw as he's ever made. I, I just don't think he, that foot very much like Jonathan Scope ever got there. Perez made the tag on Scope. Caleb Joseph has had a pretty good night. But again, it doesn't happen if Adam Jones doesn't make this play. So there's the ball gives them the avenue so there's no interference. Get the ball to the shoulder. Which he does right there the left foot is up. I think he's out. It's the same thing that happened with Jonathan. Now you can't slide with your front spikes hitting New right York says out. Yep. yep. <laughs> There you go. So tip for tap. Yep. Both teams losing a run on a challenge. Murphy will lose the sack fly and RBI. And there are now two down with the runner on at first base. The other thing it's healthy for Darren O'Day's ERA. So now they only need one out. So pool side at first base, two down. O'Day looking to wrap it up with Ibar at the plate. Ibar three for eight off him lifetime. O'Day will miss outside Ibar. Showed bunt. He's going to take the pitch. Hit by a pitch his last time up has popped out, flied out, and the Angels may still be shut out. Orioles have had eight shutouts to their credit this year. 1 0 delivery on the way. Ibar is going to get a base hit into right field. Played by Para, runner stopping at second base. So a tough inning for O'Day, but for that double play, fly ball to center. And certainly Buck Showalter does not want to have to go to the bullpen to his closer in a 5 0 game. Hoping O'Day can find that final out here in the ninth inning. Two on, two down. Connor Gillespie, 0 for 3 in the game, 0 for 6 in the two games, and 0 for his last 14.
A day's delivery to him. Gillespie will take it for a ball. Yeah, Darren's not going to get the low strike. That's the one thing that da Jerry Davis is not called tonight. 1 0 with two down. Runners off first and second base. Gillespie down to first. Davis, ball game, over. And the Orioles win it. So here in the ninth inning, the Orioles preserve the shutout on an Adam Jones play. He'll dance his way off. And the Orioles come away with a 5 0 victory. Angels shut out for the ninth time this year, and the Orioles getting a, a shutout for the ninth time. And a 5 0 win will set up the rubber match in the ball game tomorrow. No runs, three hits here in the inning, and two are left on base. Yeah, so again, almost a carbon copy of the scope.